as we now prepare to hear the gospel reading appointed for this festival of Pentecost, I invite you to, to join me in prayer using the appointed prayer of the day. If you printed it and brought a bulletin with you, you'll, you'll find it there with you. So let us pray. Oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll hear now from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When the, he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God who sends the Holy Spirit among us to reveal new gifts each day. Amen. If you're a, a member uh, of Ben's Creek or, or Mount Calvary, or, or maybe of uh, another church in our area and, and here with us today, I probably don't need to tell you that as of today, it has been 11 weeks since we last gathered together in our, our own church buildings for worship. On that last Sunday together, Ben's Creek and Mount Calvary both saw lower than normal attendance. But both congregations left their buildings that Sunday under the impression that, that we would probably be able to continue worship the following Sunday, maybe with, with just some extra precautions in place. Even myself, as someone who, who was increasingly following every bit of information I could find, who was reading reports from the World Health Organization, the CDC, the Department of Health, and every other bit of information I could find, even I never imagined that we would spend almost a quarter of a year away from our church building. And yet, here we are. There was a, a time where we, we hoped we might be able to return for, for worship uh, on Palm Sunday or, or Easter. But instead, we, we gathered together here on the holiest uh, of days for the church. And, and Throughout the entire season uh, of Easter, we, we've either met online through YouTube or, or here at the drive-in. Here we are on Pentecost Sunday, and we have yet to be able to return to worship in our buildings. But as we begin the, this time where... We might be gathering at, at the drive-in together here, not just once a month, but, but every week. I, I can think of few better times to start that off than Pentecost Sunday. Over the, the first part of our, our service here, you, you heard Pastor Scott read some of the scriptures that tell why Christians hold this day so highly. The, the stories that, that explain what this day means to us as a church. 
Some people even refer to it as the birthday of the church. That day on which the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples with a mighty rushing wind and tongues of flame and, and empowered them for ministry, giving them the words and, and abilities and gifts to spread the good news and sending them out to do that. It's a, a great day to come together and worship. Now, there, there are some people who would say that, that when so many churches and, and synagogues and, and mosques closed their doors back in March, those people would say that faith in America died. Unfortunately, it, it's probably true that, that some of those churches that, that closed their doors may never open back up, just like so many businesses that, that were forced to close may not ever come back. But faith, faith did not die. The church did not die. Do you think we would be gathered here together today to celebrate Pentecost, the birthday of the church, if the church was dead. No, the, the church is not dead because the Holy Spirit is still swirling down around us with mighty rushes of wind and, and with tongues of fire. The Holy Spirit is still showing us our gifts, pushing us out of our comfort zones and sending us out into the world to do ministry and be the church. It looks uh, a little bit differently, but over the past 11 weeks, I, I have felt the power of the Holy Spirit in, in so many different ways. It, it started uh, on that, that night where we decided we, we weren't going to be having worship together, and, and I agreed to, to try and pull together videos for, for each Sunday. There was this little nudge, the, this voice in my, my head that said, John O, you're the right guy for this, do it. That was the Holy Spirit. And, and as I, I've watched thousands of our, our colleagues as pastors do similar things, offering worship via the internet or, or over the phone or public television or, or radio or or meeting in drive-in theaters or, or parking lots like we are right now. That, that was the Holy Spirit too. The amount uh, of technological learning that, that was achieved by pastors, young and old, techy and old fashioned, in such a, a short amount of time to be able to pull off these sorts of things, that, that was the Holy Spirit. In spite of fear and, and greed that, that has been prevalent in our society over the last few months, the church has kept on doing what the church does. It's been offering a, a message uh, of hope and a message of generosity. And that's because through all of this, the, the Holy Spirit has been winding its way among us. Not just uh, among pastors or, or church council members, but among every single person that prays to God. The Holy Spirit has been here, leading us, inspiring us, and guiding us. Now, uh, a moment ago, I, I said that the message uh, of the church has been one of hope and, and generosity. And I, I want to emphasize the generosity pit piece. Be, because three months ago, when, when all of this began, there, there were some what we'll call professional church people. The, the sorts of people who do research and, and write books and, and manage some of the more 
business ends uh, of the church. And, and those people were saying that most people aren't actually generous enough to continue giving to their church if they're not physically in worship. But over the, the last few months, I, I've seen that, that proven wrong at, at both of our congregations, with, with so many of you continuing to make generous gifts, even paying for the, the stamp to, to mail it in. I, I've witnessed so many of you continuing to support not just congregations, but, but other ministries and, and organizations that you care about. Things like backyard ministries for, for the folks at Mount Calvary, or, or St. Francis sharing and caring for the folks at Bent's Creek. I've witnessed our, our neighbors continuing to support their communities in, in a, a variety of ways. A few weeks ago, the, the Boswell Fire Department, where, where I am the, the chaplain and, and a captain, had a, a chicken barbecue that sold out 350 dinners in less than 45 minutes. People are, are being generous. They're providing for their neighbors. They're, they're picking up groceries. They're, they're collecting items for first responders and, and health care facilities. People are, are coming together and sharing what they have. Society ha has been telling us that we need to look out for ourselves before helping others. But so many of you said, I can look out for myself and I can help other people too. That is the Holy Spirit. When, when you hear that, that voice that says, I can still find a way to help, that that's the Holy Spirit, and that is evidence that the church is not dead and faith is not dead. Maybe it's time to think back to the Easter story. Matthew 28 tells us that the women came to the tomb early in the morning and they found it empty. And an angel tells them, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. Those women at the tomb were sad and afraid because it was empty. Because they thought that that was a sign of death. It would be so easy to be sad and afraid at an empty church building, thinking that that too is a sign of death. But God tells those women and God tells us, do not be afraid for Jesus is risen. Or in the words of one of my, my favorite preachers, the, the pastor who married Becca and I, Jesus is risen and on the loose. Jesus is risen and on the loose. The church is alive. The church is alive and the church is on the loose too. We're out moving around. We're, we're still doing things as the church. The, the gifts that, that we're going to need as the church moving forward are going to be different. Who would have ever believed that a, a Lutheran church would need parking attendants rather than ushers? That, that we would need video production rather than, than printed bulletin layouts? Some of the, the gifts that we're going to need in the future are, are different but they are, are gifts that people have. Gifts that the Holy Spirit will help us lift up and recognize that that voice that says, why don't you try this? 
or, or why don't you offer that? Please don't get me wrong. I long for the day where we can return to the worship spaces that, that we share with generations before us. I, I long for the day that, that I don't have to carry my, my daughter between cars before worship, but I, I can let her roam free and, and say hello to the, the people she's known for her entire life. That day will come soon enough. But in the meantime, let's trust that the Holy Spirit is here with us. That, that Christ is risen and on the loose. And that because of that, we're going to encounter God in places and ways that are completely and utterly unexpected. Let's trust that the ways that we share the good news and share God's love will be different from what we're used to. But above all, let's trust that the Holy Spirit will guide us through all of that. That, that all uh, of those little nudges all uh, of those ideas, those voices in our heads saying, maybe God wants me to try this. That is the voice of God. That is the breath of God. And, and so let us give thanks to God for that gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and give thanks for knowing that it's here among us even today. Amen.